The world has witnessed the brutality of Muslim extremist groups from ISIS in the Middle East to Boko Haram in parts of Africa. It's prompting many people to ask the question, how is it that terrorists commit such bloody acts of violence using the Islamic faith as a shield? Here's CNN's Jean Casares. Our knife will continue to strike the next of your people. In the name of Allah, the terrorist group ISIS sends a message for the world to hear that they represent the true principles of Islam, seen here in a Vice News video. But how can this group, now more notorious than Al Qaeda, claim to speak for all Muslims? Muslim leaders say they can't. Islam is a peaceful religion. The very meaning of Islam means submission to the will of God to attain peace. Experts say the terrorism of ISIS is based only on their twisted interpretation of the religion. And the religion itself is not more dangerous than others. No Muslim in his or her right mind will ever uh, justify or, or, or agree with the killing of innocent people because there are clear commands in the Quran that prevents acts of aggression against innocent people. According to the Pew Institute, there are 1.6 billion Muslims worldwide, and in 2010, almost 3.5 million in North America. They are generally younger than the world's overall population, and their numbers are growing. Young people who do not uh, um, uh, feel uh, maybe sometimes included, or they believe in justice, uh, they, they see injustice around the world, uh, in a vacuum of leadership, uh, ISIS and the likes of ISIS and Boko Haram jump to exploit these young people who are lured to believe that they are fighting for a just cause. START's database tracks global terrorism. They found the majority of terrorist attacks in 2013 occurred in three countries, Iraq, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Majority Muslim nations where the victims are often Muslim too. The Taliban, ISIS, and Boko Haram are ranked as the three bloodiest groups. Al-Qaeda became a household name in September 2001 by perpetrating violence they say is rooted in their faith. September 2013, the Somali terror group Al-Shabaab, an affiliate of Al-Qaeda, takes center stage with the Kenyan Mall massacre. And earlier this year, Boko Haram created global outrage with the kidnapping of more than 200 schoolgirls in Western Africa. One of the questions that people just can't wrap their head around is that something that is based in religion in the name of God does such violent things. Islam is being leveraged and, and uh, utilized by these organizations in order to, uh, to gain the end state that they want. And that end state is described in Islamic terms. Um, it's derived from uh, medieval Islamic ideology. Uh, most of the rest of the Muslim world has, has moved well beyond that. Um, but uh, so, so we, we should not vilify the Muslim world. The Muslim world is the, is the best chance of defeating global jihadist groups like Al Qaeda or the Islamic State. Violence in the name of God or just plain terror? When it comes to ISIS and the rest of the world, increasingly, that seems to be a distinction without a difference. Jean Casares, CNN, New York. A distinction without a difference is a good way of putting it. Joining us now is Arsalan uh, Iftikhar. He's a senior editor at the Islamic Monthly Magazine and the founder of TheMuslimGuy.com. Also, Dr. Tafik Hamid, the senior fellow at the Potomac Institute for Policy Studies and the author of Inside Jihad. Also with us tonight is Tom Fuentes, CNN law enforcement analyst and former FBI assistant director. So let's talk about this and let's be very honest about it. This is a discussion that's happening really across the world. I'm going to ask you, starting with Arsalan, let's begin with the simple question, as some are asking, is Islam a more violent religion than other faiths? Absolutely not, Don. Um, in the history of humanity, every single religion on earth has been used by fringe extremists for violent purposes. And to isolate Islam, uh, you know, outside of 
the history of 1,400 years and over 1 billion people uh, who practice it is being disingenuous and dishonest. Yes, there is a problem with Islamist extremists and terrorists like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Boko Haram, but to equate Islam with violence or terrorism... Uh, but those groups are, the two those are very, very violent groups that we have all seen that you have just reeled off. So I'll ask Tafiq Hamid, Dr. Hamid, yeah. is Islam more violent than any other faith? Uh, I believe the, there are certain areas in Islam that needs to be reinterpreted. Uh, otherwise, we, you will face violence at the end. Other religions have probably some texts that may lead to violence, if you understood it literally. However, many of these religions have reformed already. Islam has not reformed yet. And the same anachronistic, old-fashioned ways of teaching are still today so valid. And uh, Is that and a yes or a no? Is it more violent? Uh, I, I believe with the literal understanding of it, 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 it and with its history as written in Sharia books, today it is more violent. Tom Fuentes. Yes, it must be. Otherwise, how could all these groups take the name of Islam to become violent and, and do what they do? They're the ones that call themselves Islamists. They're the ones, you know, ISIS calling themselves the Islamic State. We didn't pin that name on them. We didn't say you're the non-Christian, you're the non-Jewish, the non-Buddhist, the non-Hindu, the non-Sikh. They said we're the Islamic State. So they're interpreting uh, the, belief, the teachings of the Prophet, the, the uh, teachings of the Quran, and they're twisting it. They're putting it on it. But the, the fundamental basis is that they're calling themselves Islam and then cutting people's heads what? off. Go ahead, Mr. Wait, Don, uh, first of all, I find it absolutely astounding that a former assistant director of the FBI would say that Islam is a more violent religion than most other religions. If you look at the Lord's Resistance Army and Joseph Kony that was made famous in the Kony 2012 campaign, that is a Christianist organization. You look at... Uh, you look at Christian uh, extremist organizations here in the United States that have bombed gay nightclubs and abortion nightclub uh, abortion clinics in the name of Christendom, but every mainstream Christian knows that these are completely outside of the, any but normative by saying, understanding. But by saying, uh, when, well, let me jump in. On, by hold, saying hold, that hold. Islam is more violent than any other religion, it doesn't mean that other religions aren't violent. We're talking about history and the reality here. If you're looking at the bombing of abortion clinics, you're not looking at the numbers of a 9-11. You're not looking at the numbers of a Boko Haram. You're not looking at the many people who were killed from ISIS and, and, and beheaded. People don't go into abortion clinics. Yes, death, death is death. But Don, people don't go Don, into abortion I'm, I'm clinics and behead okay, people. Don, oh, listen, what he's saying is true, at, Don. Look, Those, go ahead, look Tom. At, look what he's at saying is basically at, true. There was this level of violence in the other religions. The, the ancient Israelites did similar things in towns and, and killed everybody, men, women, and children, in a town thousands of years ago. The, the Catholics, you know, there were Catholic priests that accompanied the conquistadors on the ships back in the day when well, they landed in Mexico modern, and landed in South America. And now. they committed the Spanish Inquisition. That's what I'm trying to say. So major religions have had that period of time where they were as violent and, and frankly, as horrible as could be to try to convert people to their teachings. And if they didn't get converted by hearts and flowers, they were killed or, or uh, convinced by persuasion and violence to do it. So. What I'm trying to say is that, yes, in the modern era here and now, those other religions have kind of moved on past that being their normal yeah. method of operating to convert people to believe their belief. These people like ISIS, al-Baghdadi, is basically saying to moderate Sunnis, any Shia, any Yazidi, any Christian, anybody, I'm going to kill all of you. Mm -hmm. You need to convert yeah, so to believe you're gonna, you're, you're gonna we're you're going gonna to kill you're, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna take what one knucklehead says out of 1.6 billion of us. I mean, if you look at the Oklahoma City bombing, Timothy McVeigh's co-conspirator Terry Nichols was a self-professed member of the Christian Identity Movement, which Syracuse University has found has over 250,000 followers here in the United States. I mean, it, it is absolutely astonishing mm -hmm. that, it, that people are going to be so reductive and take isolated fringe extremists and, and, and you know, extrapolate that to a religion of over one billion people. I mean, this, this right, goes into the whole the narrative. You're this, saying this, that this, these groups listen, are so Listen, isolated. listen, listen, Tom. On every listen, continent? President George, listen, President George W. Bush, after 9-11, said that the United States is not at war with Islam. 
Islam. President Barack Obama has said the same thing. But everything that is being said tonight feeds directly into this clash of civilizations mantra where it's the West against Islam. And, you know, for the 7 million American Muslims that live in the United States today, myself included, you know, you, you tend to forget that three out of the last 10 Nobel Peace Prize winners were Muslims. That the greatest athlete in America, Muhammad Ali, the funniest dude in America, Dave Chappelle, are Muslims. Doctor, Muslims are as peace-loving and normal citizens of society as anyone else. We've got to get that's to a not break. What I, that's I, not I, what I'm I want saying. you to hold that thought. But I think that I think that you are talking over each other. You're not necessarily listening to each other. We're getting a little far afield here. And we're going to continue this conversation, right? It's a very delicate conversation yeah. and dicey, but it's important to ask these questions and to have this conversation, so we're going to do it more on the other side of the break. Do Muslims need to do more to combat extremism within their own faith, or do we just need to report on those efforts more? We'll examine all of that next. The ISIS executions of American journalists Stephen Sotloff and James Foley shocked the world. And today, Sotloff's family made a statement directly to the terrorists who corrupt the name of Islam. We are back with Arsalan Iftikhar, Dr. Tawik uh, Hamid, and Tom Fuentes. Gentlemen, let me read to you what the spokesman for the Sotloff family said today. He read it in Arabic. But let me read to you the translation that he wanted to telegraph this message to the leader of ISIS. He said, I have a message to the Islamic nation. That's what he started with. Sotloff loved the Arab and the Islamic world, and all he wanted was to send their message to the world. I have a message for Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the head of ISIS. The month of Ramadan is the month of mercy. Where is your mercy? Then he says an Arabic uh, word, wayluk, which is a word he used. It's an archaic Arabic word, which corresponds to, in this con uh, text, you have committed a great sin or mistake. You talk about Islam in the noble Quran, but I know a verse from the Quran. Fight in the cause of God those who fight you and do not transgress. God loves not the aggressors. I am here debating you with kindness. I don't have a sword in my hand, and I am ready for your answer. Dr. Hamid, yeah. what's your response to the statement that he read today? It's a very honest statement, uh, uh, very meaningful. And in, it carries a very powerful message, which, which is there are verses in the Quran that are extremely peaceful and promotes peace. But the real problem is that the, the, the verses that were used during war time, instead of contextualizing these verses to the early stage of Islam, the current teaching and interpretations still uses these verses as they are. And they promote violent principles like declaring wars on non-Muslims and offer them Islam or pay jizya, humiliating tax, or to kill them. And when you have such teaching that's permeating almost all Islamic uh, uh, tafsir inter or interpretations for the Quran, then a young Muslim will have no option if he become more religious but to follow these principles, especially when you see many of uh, the teachings giving more promotion and more emphasis on the violent teachings. I think Islam can be saved when the emphasis is put on the peaceful t uh, verses, and there are many peaceful Muslims who follow this, but we cannot deny the existence of interpretations that are the, mo the dominant ones, the mainstream ones. And I challenge the leading Islamic scholars to come to us tomorrow and say to us that the principle of ISIS, that the Muslims must fight non-Muslims and offer them Islam or jizya or humiliating tax or to be killed, that is a wrong concept or unacceptable concept. I challenge these scholars to come to us and in, instead of asking the whole world to call Islam the religion of peace, to say it clearly and unambiguously that this principle of Islam or jizya or be killed, what ISIS is doing is a wrong and unacceptable or obsolete concept. I wish they do this, then we can start talking okay. about the, the, okay. the phenomenon. Well, yeah. then, Dr. Hafi, how, how do you respond to that? I mean, clearly, is there, he's saying that, you know, maybe there's an optics problem, or maybe that um, many Muslims around the world are, aren't aware of how they are perceived and that they're perceived more violently. Re whether it's real or not, that is a perception. To Mr. Iftikhar. Oh, he didn't say my name. Um, you know, Tawfiq doesn't have to wait. I mean, if you look at statements that have been made, the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia condemned ISIS as public enemy number one for Muslims. No, I want to condemn the principle. Hold the on, principle, hold on. not may, just may, ISIS. Can I finish my statement? 
the Organization of the Islamic Conference, which is the biggest umbrella group of the 57 Muslim majority nations on the face of earth, uh, on the face of the earth, have condemned ISIS. I actually knew Stephen Satloff. Steve and I actually became Facebook friends about four or five years ago when he was still in Libya, and we corresponded. So this latest ISIS execution is, you know, it it, it hit close to home, and and you know, it's something that you know, as a Muslim public intellectual, you know, having to discuss these issues, and and you know, Muslim leaders and scholars from around the world, every Muslim organization in America. Has condemned ISIS in public uh, statements. I mean, you know, we 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 can we stand on on street corners with bullhorns for the rest of our lives, and and we condemn terrorism. Mm -hmm. But for some people, it's it's never enough. They're going to only focus on the minuscule extremist mm -hmm. minority and conflate that to represent all 1.6 yeah. billion Muslims. But around one the world. evil yes. outweighs one good by by many many exponentially, and that mm -hmm. is that's the issue that people are. That most start. people realize, and many people in the Muslim faith aren't realizing that mm. that 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 reality. Well, gentlemen, we well, thank you for all for being here. We have to go, but thanks so much for having this conversation. It's important pleasure. to start the conversation. Obviously, it gets heated, but we appreciate all of your perspectives and you coming in to try to begin this important conversation. Thank you.